Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to this tiny garage. Last week, we finally finished lapping and reassembling the cylinder heads for Bank 1 and Bank 2, which means we're ready to move on to something new. And so this week, we're going to focus on the cooling system, including installing a low temperature thermostat. But before that excitement, let's work on something a bit more down to earth. Everyone's heard of the water pump. No surprise there. I was surprised that this Loctite 5900 sealant turns into tarmac after a week or two. I bought a new tube at the Porsche dealer. Here's the old water pump. You'll see that the plastic impeller is still in visibly good shape and no real noise or grinding. It works pretty good, not as good as the new one. The word on the street is you should change these as often as you change your socks. So I'm gonna. Here is the new Pierberg water pump with the lifetime warranty from FCP Euro. It does have a very fluid motion to it. I'm happy to be replacing it. The instructions do say to put a thin layer of the 5900 sealant on both sides of the gasket. There is some on the other side of the pump there. And then seven 10 millimeter bolts going in here, all fastened to 10 newton meters. The usual mantra. Two of these bolts are slightly longer, those two there are ever so slightly longer than the others. I then marked all the bolts after torquing with the white sharpie from subscriber David Gray. Thank you David. Next up, following a similar recipe, is the coolant mounting bracket. We're going to put a little bit of sealant on one side of the gasket. I cleaned up the bracket itself with a wire brush and brake cleaner. Came out looking pretty good. Six 10 mils fastened to 10 newton meters takes care of that one. While we're in this area, we should throw on the lower idler pulley. The lower idler pulley still feels pretty fresh. I do have an underdrive pulley that I'm going to put on later. And so if this one seems suspect, I will replace it at that time. Just 23 newton meters to fasten this 13 millimeter and we're done. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you. The low temperature thermostat. Well, let's put it on first and then we'll talk about it. Same procedure here, some sealant around the gasket area on both sides. That's the old one, 83 degrees, you can see marked on the little plunger there. And then this is the new one, 71 degrees, 12 degrees cooler. You should probably say 12 degrees sooner. This one just has four 10 mil bolts fastened to 10 newton meters. No surprise there. And then marking them up with the pen when they're all torqued. Lovely. A low temperature thermostat does not make the engine run at a lower temperature. Engines are designed to operate at operating temperature. In this engine, that's 194 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 90 degrees centigrade, which is right in the center of the temperature gauge. While 194 degrees is considered optimal, there is a range that's considered normal, and that's between 101 and 213 degrees Fahrenheit. The standard thermostat opens at 83 degrees, whereas the low temp thermostat opens at 71 degrees, 12 degrees sooner. But as you can see, both types of thermostat open well within the engine's operating temperature range. The mechanism that makes a thermostat work is this sealed wax-filled container called the charge cylinder. As the coolant flow heats up the wax inside the charge cylinder, the wax expands, changing the position of the thermostat and allowing coolant flow to the radiators. The thermostat is not an on-off switch. It gradually opens and closes depending on temperature, meaning that it can take some time to react. The liquid coolant in an engine's cooling system is acting as a heat sink, meaning that as the coolant passes by the engine's hot bits, 
It's able to soak up some of that heat energy and carry it away. Imagine, if you will, for a moment, that you are near the beginning of your journey. You've been idling through town, stopped at a couple of stoplights, and finally you're at the freeway stoplight and you give it the beans all the way onto the freeway. What that's going to do is create more explosions from your higher RPM. That's going to create more heat. And then that heat is going to have to get taken away by your cooling system. And we're going to call that sudden burst of heat a heat pulse. Let's see what happens to that heat pulse if the thermostat is closed. Now, this engine is designed like a pretzel, so I hope I got this right. Uh, here we go. Now, coolant has to get in there somehow, yeah? So this pipe here is connected to the expansion tank that's in the engine bay. So fresh coolant, boom. In the water pump itself, it has multiple sections in there. It's taking in that fresh coolant, then it's spinning it out into uh, bank one and cylinder head one, and then also going over to bank two, cylinder head uh, two, and the heat exchanger needs some coolant joy as well. So once it's done there and it's picked up its heat pulse, it's gonna come back down the coolant manifold. It's gonna go past the coolant temperature sensor and tell the gauge in the dash what it thinks the temperature is. And so it's sensing the coolant temperature here. It's not sensing, you know, the hot spot in cylinder six over here, right? There's only one thing and it's that. And then assuming that your thermostat is closed and your heater is off, it's going to come back through some Porsche trickery back into the water pump and go back around again for another spin. So it's a very short journey. And so that heat pulse is going to come back around into the engine in short order. Now, if the thermostat is open and the way the thermostat gets warmed up is because it shares this cavity here with the water pump. And so as the water or the coolant heats up, it's going to uh, heat up the uh, charge cylinder and open up this uh, thermostat here. And that allows flow. And so once the coolant has done its job, it's picked up its heat pulse and it gets over to here. If the thermostat is open, it's going to allow that hot coolant to leave through this large pipe here and do a long journey all the way to the front of the car, go through both radiators and then come back again before it can uh, go back into the engine. And so it comes back on this side right here and then gets spun back through the engine again giving it much more time to cool down. So the other thing that's over here is for the heater core. So if you turn the heat on in the dash, then uh, that hot coolant will go down here. And that's what the small pipes are for on the bank one and bank two coolant pipe. This is sending it to the heater. And then this one is where it comes back from the heater and it actually joins the pipe that is connected to the expansion tank. And I assume it just gets sucked straight back into the uh, water pump. Uh, and so that's it. That heat pulse has got much more time to cool down if your thermostat is open. And so therefore the low temperature thermostat is going to be open sooner and remain open for a larger proportion of the time. I would like if you would hit the like button So why not just run without a thermostat? While there are some cars out there that do just that, if you remember back to episode 25 on bore scoring, we talked about engines having a hard time running efficiently when they're cold. So while we think of thermostats as a way to keep the engine cool, their first job is to reduce the capability of the cooling system to allow the engine to get to operating temperature as soon as possible. All right then, so a low temperature thermostat is not really about lowering your coolant temperatures. It's more about balancing out your cooling system and allowing it to prevent spikes in engine heat. But let's say you did want to reduce your coolant temperature. Let's say you were gonna do some serious racing and you put a bunch of extra horsepower into your engine. To achieve something like that, you would need to make the radiators more efficient by making them larger, changing their position, putting some huge fans on them. And then also you'd have to increase the flow rate of the coolant to be able to take advantage of that. Both of which are quite extreme 
adaptions for a road car, not something we're going to do here. But I have heard of a very simple thing you can do on all 911s to increase the efficiency of your cooling system. Let's take a look through the left window. Yes, that's right folks. Porsche air intakes are perfect leaf scoops. Let's have a look through the right hand window here. Oh, we've got some gravel, we've got some leaves and a sticker. Bonus, who's running out to the garage with a vacuum cleaner right now? Hit the notification bell, it's up there. Yes, please. Bank two coolant pipe. Well, this first coolant pipe on bank two has two sections, this little elbow that I got from the Porsche dealer. Importantly, it has a small side and then a big side that goes onto the coolant manifold. This pipe came from Euro, an aftermarket from Pelican Parts. I would have had to wait for one from Germany if I ordered the Porsche brand. Then putting all the different clips back on and using that Craftsman hose clamp tool, which is a life changer. I love that thing. Then I noticed here, trying to put the clamp on from the hose side doesn't work. And so by taking off the hose, putting it onto the pipe itself, that really just made it very easy. Who knew? Then putting on the larger hose there in very much the same way. And that one's ready to go. The first step with installing this one is to put the hose onto the coolant manifold on the right and the front. And then just two 10 millimeters fastened to 10 newton meters to get that guy in place. To help me know how to put this all back together, I took photographs of the old pipe and hose when I took them off, and that will guide me on the location and orientation of all the clamps and hoses. I'm also using the blue thread locker on most of these bolts as I put the engine back together. The coolant temperature sensor is what tells the gauge inside your dash what temperature it thinks the engine is at. And it's located on the passenger side or the bank two side of the coolant manifold. Now that our cooling system is all refreshed and lovely, I am very excited to know what the next step is. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.